So let's talk about how marriage is like a garden and not a farm. When you have a farm, you have the combined harvester, you have the farm workers, you have a whole lot going on. Talk to me about that. Yes. Um, you know, there's a huge difference between a garden and a farm. You know, and one of those differences is just in terms of size. So you will notice what is interesting with the book of Genesis is the Bible says God planted the garden of Eden and there where he put man and there what we see in the context of the garden of Eden where family originated. Now it's important to know that it wasn't the farm of Eden but the garden of Eden and saying that what that means is garden is more small in size is something that's a little bit more personal is a little bit more private and the implications in the text is what God is saying as we come into family relationship and into marriage there are certain things that are very private even if you were dating in your you know courtship period there are certain things we must be careful of because unlike a, a farm where it's huge there are so many workers everybody chunking their ideas into what should be done with different different things a garden is a little bit more different you know where the husband the wife you know or even if you were dating both of you are uh, along with god and that's why when you look at scripture you will see when god married the man with his wife there were only two people plus god in the garden and he set it up for a purpose because he wanted the absence of any other voices interfering into the relationship. You know, something that we must be cautious of today, like we got in-laws today. We got mom giving her opinion to someone who's to get married and say, oh, I think there's the person you should marry. I think there's the wife you should get. There's the, you know, or son you should marry or the man you should be with. You got to really be able to hear from God to identify your own bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh and not being influenced or manipulated with farmers and family members and friends and social media and all of these things today that feed our garden, turning our garden into farm where we just fetch everybody's idea and sometimes even if there's problem, most of these people, they might even be family and friends. They might have good intentions to give you their advice, but maybe the advice they are giving you might not work for your garden. It might be good for the farm. So you must be able to know what are some things that personally I can discuss with my wife that we can resolve, but also personally, even if I wasn't married, to hear from God, to know this is the person that is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, rather than relying on someone that may have a good intention telling me who should be the bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. And that can manipulate God's purpose for your life. You know, very, very important thing to watch out for. Yeah. Yes, um, I, I totally agree with that. And I think that it is important for you to hear from God and know um, for yourself. I think sometimes though people are in um, situations or stages in their Christianity where they're not in themselves able to go that deep with God. I think there is a place to have other people be involved, um, but I think it should be solicited by you. You should say, okay, I'm thinking about marrying this person. I've been praying to God, but in myself, I might not be at that level to um, be able to determine on my own. Um, and then seeking advice from who is appropriate to get advice mm -hmm. um, from someone that is maybe more yeah. spiritual than you are, yeah. um, someone that maybe has more of an idea of marriage than you do. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so I do think that there is a place for bringing people in, I guess just like in a garden, right? You're planting a garden, um, you're putting in seeds, and maybe you may not understand how mm -hmm. to fertilize and to grow these plants and to do whatever you need to do, you would go and look for expert help in whatever 
area or okay go ask somebody oh what type of seeds would be best in this soil or whatever and i think there's so i think there is still yeah. a place mm -hmm. but i think that it should be solicited by you and mm -hmm. not um someone coming in and mm -hmm. giving their own opinions and everyone yeah yeah and that's good and i like that you say that and while we're still talking about farm workers mm -hmm. so the way you plant in a farm is different to the way that you plant in a garden. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about communication because sometimes the way people handle conflict is different within mm -hmm. a marriage. You find that some withdraw and then some are overly confrontational. Mm -hmm. um, what has been your experience with that, uh, especially with couples that you've helped or counseled and what advice can you give, you know, to somebody who's watching? Yeah, absolutely. In terms of just how people deal with conflict, you know, people come from different backgrounds. Um, and those are one of the things that really contribute towards how people respond in terms of conflict. Because there are some people that came from a home where what they saw in a soft family value or upbringing was that never talked to mom when there was an issue. It just kind of filtered it away and worked its way somehow. And there are some guys or even some females who out there that feel every time they even attempt to solve an issue in a relationship, instead of solving it, it even escalate, you know? And some people don't even know, like, look, if I try to sit her down and talk, it's just going to go. If I try to set him down to talk, it's just going to escalate. And yes, they might not even know how to deal with that. And part of that is learning how to, because the issue is the problem won't just fix itself. You will have to be able to say, even as much as you might say, look, I didn't grow up this particular way sitting with my wife, but yes, you see, you are responsible for your future. You are really responsible for your future, regardless of what happens to you in your past. You know, you may have had a worse upbringing, whatever way, but now God is exposing this kind of program to you so that you can take responsibility. You know, most people say, well, that's how I grew up. That's what I saw from my mom. So it's just hard for me to transition to really, you know, that's what my dad taught me. I get it. But what your dad taught you, what you may have learned from society may not be what you need now for the future God has for you. So you will have to develop a new skill in, if I'm not somebody that can sit with my wife and discuss, I have to, you know, I have to be able to, if I even feel talking to her, you know, my escalate things, and maybe I need to see how do I start the conversation? Because the truth, the people who say they don't talk problems or solve it, they still talk. You know, they would talk during dating time, they would talk, on many other areas, but it's just when there's issues, they just don't know how to. But you have to learn to know, I still need to communicate in a way that can solve issues rather than just bursting out. And like, this is just me, so I just don't talk about it and it fix itself because it never does. It will just keep building with grief and anger. And then one day it just explodes and stuff. So in order to reach to that point, regardless of our background, we have to learn to sit, find the best time that works, where you feel, you know, is the suitable time and discuss these things. It's communicating, yeah. yeah. I also think that it is important mm -hmm. for both people to understand each other mm -hmm. and uh, the, the background that they come from. Mm -hmm. um, and then try to maybe present the specific issue in a way that you know that would not be threatening to that person because everyone is growing, mm -hmm. you know, and it is a process to come out of some of the things that you've learned as children and mm -hmm. things that you've seen your parents do and things that you've done all the time before you got married. So I think that it's also wise on the part of the spouse on either side to be able to see that and say, okay, you know what, let me, or at least ask for a strategy or ask God for a strategy or see a strategy in the Bible or wherever you can get the strategy from to present the conflict in a way that may not be as threatening to that person. And so mm -hmm. that you could get that communication out a little bit easier. 
Yeah, yeah, that is so true. Because there's time, like you even mentioned, where in when people try to resolve things rather than resolving and then delay ultimatums. Like, you know what, if we don't talk about this, I'm going to do this or this is going to happen. And that will not solve the problem. So you're right, just really asking the Lord, what's the best way I can approach this so that it doesn't escalate? And that is so critical, you know, on the how to the communication. Yeah. Right, like maybe sometimes, like for a wife, right? Your husband doesn't want to communicate, but maybe using a time that he's happy. You know, like, oh, you're watching a football game or you're doing something that he likes with him, with, with you. And, you know, maybe that's the best time to present whatever the conflicts, what, whatever the disagreement is in a sweet and loving way. And maybe you'll get a better response than you doing it when you're angry or when he knows you're angry and you're both angry and you're both frustrated and, you know, just, it's, it's wisdom. Yeah. That's what you do. I do do that. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, sometimes you have to. <laughs> wow, that was some amazing insight. So talk to me about tending to your individual needs in a marriage, because sometimes when you're, you know, trying to deal with children and you're running a business, you're running a ministry and you're doing all these things, where do you find the time to tend to your individual needs um, within a marriage setting? Okay, individual needs. Um, so I always go back to my husband and when he talks about the full cycle of life. So these, all of these things are connected to each other. So the individual needs, the time with God, the family, business, school, ministry, all of these things, they are all a part of this cycle of life. And it's important that these, this cycle is balanced. So if I find that I'm going too far into one area and I'm neglecting another, then I need to look at those things and I need to balance them. So for my individual self, I know that I need to have time by myself. I know maybe I need to go shopping. Maybe I need to spend time with God. Whatever it is that I need to do, I feel like it is just, it would be an injustice or in service to my family if I were not attending to my own individual needs because they're all connected. I cannot function fully in all the other responsibilities that I have if I'm not tending to them. So I guess we just do mm -hmm. <laughs> because we know and sometimes um, doing and certain things, well, certain things are done in our lives because we know mm -hmm. about it. We know that we have to attend to those needs. We know that we'll burn out in other areas. We know that we won't be able to function properly for our children, for our husband, for whatever God is doing in our lives if we don't attend to those things. Mm -hmm. And so some people don't because they don't know. They feel like, okay, I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this. But it is just as important that we attend to ourselves and our own needs. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, and that is that is a really huge one that you mentioned. I did teach on something I call the eight value systems of life. Mm -hmm. There was a time I was praying and I asked the Lord, how come, you know, you see a Christian very anointed, very great, but then they are very deficient in other areas of life that even affect their relationships. And in prayer, this was something that I just captured almost kind of like an open vision. And the Lord showed me this Ryan cycle. And I saw the top spiritual development, very important, and then physical development, and then family, and then physical health, and finance, and relationship, and then academic pursuit and relaxation. Those were the eight areas. And the Lord began to tell me that each one is very important. And in case like marriage, how do I even attend to my needs? But even more so, how am I sensitive to even the needs of my spouse? Very, very important. You know, like a garden again, that's what marriage is. You are working in the garden. And sometimes God has an assignment for her. He has an assignment for me. And there's a place in your marriage where you are going kind of like you have an area you are tilting your sword. And my wife Ruby is on the other side and she tilting her sword. You can get to the point where you are so busy 
and so concerned with the path that you are working on mm -hmm. till you are not sensitive to know what's happening to the next person. You know, so there's time we have to set up in our relationship where even if it's once every two weeks to go out to eat. And it's during those times you kind of discuss. We have to be intentional about those moments, you know, because like I said, you can be so busy and just flying to not knowing your wife might be bleeding on her path or she may have cut herself while attempting to a soil and you don't know and you're just building and planting and she's there hurt and those kind of thing and yes you're building the marriage so this time you must be able to take a break and say hey is there's one day in every two weeks that maybe we can just take a walk you know we used to going out every now and then and eating and during those times sometimes we just drive around and during those times we're discussing and I can now hear her crowd in the area of the garden, the marriage that she's working on. And even if she's not expressing it, I can see it. I can see the tour on her body. There's so much she's attending to. And the sensitivity is key, you know, because look at today's life. We are so busy. Work, family, school, and those are great pursuit. But yet, as you're building your relationship, there must be intentionality to know we have to take a break. If it's once a month, you must be committed to that. Go out and eat, take a walk, and, you know, do something you like to do and use those times to build the relationship. You know, today the structure we see in the American economy or even in the Western world is as the husband is coming home, the wife is going to work. As the wife is going to work, the husband is coming home. Just like a traffic, you know, and yet they might be doing great. You know, the guy is pursuing his dream, but it would take a tour. and You won't even be sensitive to know her needs or his needs. And you're just flying until it starts killing the person eternally and people start feeling unloved. So there must be an intentionality to know we have to meet. I don't care if it's once a month, go out, sit, eat, celebrate, talk about your relationship. You know, you have to do those things, communicate, even if there was distances plan a time where you will have to talk and share things or even fly and meet one another is so 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 important you know and stuff yeah that's good and so i'm gonna put you on the spot pastor ruby so <laughs> <laughs> so you are you're an american woman married to an african man yes how do you foster tending to his need to be a man and to be the man in the house especially considering that you guys are from two different cultures. Yeah, and it's, it's really interesting because, yes, here, the woman, you know, she's supposed to be independent and uh, be able to make her own decisions, and, you know, no man is supposed to tell her what to do. <laughs> and it's interesting because I grew up in a family like that. My mom was like the one She's like, I'm gonna do, you know, what I wanna do. And she was the one pretty much leading the family. So I grew up in that. So when we got married, oh my goodness, it was a shock. It was, there was a culture shock, right? Because we're different from different cultures, but it was a shock in, okay, I can't be that pushy, woman, I can't be that person that's going to take control and be the one that's going to tell him what to do <laughs> yeah. because I grew up in that family. And so it's funny, if I would not have submitted to what God yeah. had for me to be as a wife, because I had to read the scripture, okay, this is not what I'm supposed to be, then we would not have made it because mm. his personality is like, I am the man. <laughs> I am the man. And I came into the relationship like, I am the woman. <laughs> I myself had to um, change. I had to mm -hmm. let God change me. Mm -hmm. I had to read the word and say, wait, this is not what I'm supposed to be. And I had to submit. Mm -hmm. I had to do what I had to do according to the word of God. And I think that's what it's the foundation for everything. I am in, and if I'm doing something wrong, then I need to change it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the word of God. We go back to the word of God, yeah. no matter where we're from, yeah. no matter where we are. If we're in America and we're like, yay, I'm a woman, you know, but what does it say in the word of God? I should be submissive to my husband. So. 
Yes. And, <laughs> and that is a real uh -huh. crucial, very, very critical point. She says, and that's exactly how um, she has learned to really be a wife. And you see, this is why when you look at scriptures, you see, we live in a world where, for example, there's many independent wives, even in the body of Christ. And then there's also independent ladies who are in the process of becoming wives. Very important. The Bible in no way is said a single lady to submit to anyone. He's saying, but he says, wives. So the problem is, if a lady is very independent for such a culture we have today, she does her own thing. She has a degree, say, from an accredited university. She has a great job working, taking care of herself for years. And now that kind of life she has laid for years and enter into a relationship, you will need to submit to God's model of a marriage. Other than that, you will not have the kind of relationship that God will want you to have. So what we see today happening in the body of Christ is, especially the women from the Western world, because we see that strong sense of, you're really not going to tell me what to do. But then if you have that mentality, you will just stay being a lady, but you won't be qualified as a wife. Because in Ephesians chapter 4, we see Paul acknowledging, saying, wives submit to your husband. And that word sub is where we get the word to come under. You know, you see the substation, subway. You are coming under, you know, your wife. You are not like a children just obeying him. He says, submit to your husband as unto the Lord. It's very important. So the man too is looking up to God as you are looking up to your husband. And so if you took that analogy even back to the beginning in Genesis, there's also a balance too, because you see God created Adam. Then you see Adam is in tune with God. The Bible says he's walking with God in the cool of the day. There is this communion and fellowship. He's connected to God. So he's seeing God's vision. It was at that junction that God says it is not good that this man who's connected with me can be alone. And then God brought him the wife. Now when she came, she came under Adam's vision. So she may have had her own thing, her own stuff going, but she came under it as a suitable helper. So it's very, very important if, regardless of the cultural differences, the cultural background, we must be able to empty ourselves of some things, even from our culture that don't align with scripture. And be able to say, yes, I grew up very independent. Nobody can tell me what to do. But that behavior is not the model for marriage, you know. So praise God, she was able to say, you know what? Her mom was very strong, moving, running the home. The dad was like the mom and she was like the husband. But when she came, she realized that, and praise God, my personality too, you know, it won't fly. So she was able to realize, you know what? If I'm going to have a great relationship, I must be able to come under. And it's a beautiful thing. Yes. You know, and it's not something like to say it makes me take advantage of her. No. Because if I'm in tune with God, then I will appreciate her even coming in to help. You know, it's almost like if you look at the husband in the Bible, he's not just the head, he's also at the bottom. So in the Old Testament, he's at the bottom. In the New Testament, he's at the head. And the woman is in the middle. So the guy being the head, he sees the vision. He's the one thinking of the next two, three years where to take the family. And then he shares that vision with his wife. That's being the head. He comes up with the ideas and the vision. Then he goes down to the drawing board to lay the blueprint, how he's going to take his family there. That's the foundation. But then he communicates that vision he had received from God to the wife so that she can begin to prophesy, like Joel speaks of it, and pray that God, whatever that you have shown my husband and gave her input and intake. So that is the model. So, you know, for every female out there that you are believing God for a relationship and you might be a wonderful person, you're like, you know what? No man's going to tell me what to do. That has been your life. But as you enter into a relationship, you are submitting, you are coming under a vision, hear me, of not just the man. The vision the man has is from God, if he's connected to God. So you are coming on God's vision, 
And he himself isn't taking an advantage of it because if he's in tune with God, he wouldn't abuse your coming under his vision. He will even cherish the fact that you are supporting it and you will run together. So yes. very, very key thing. Yeah. I just want to say one other thing because I know that, yes, exactly. Women, sometimes they want to come under. Um, and in our situation, it works great. Uh, but they want to come under. But right, right. We're supposed to submit to our husbands, but also our husbands are supposed to love us as as um jesus he loves the church as christ loves the church and so sometimes there's a problem with the submitting of a woman because a man is not loving mm -hmm. and so and so there needs to be the combination of the two yeah. for yeah. that to work absolutely yes <laughs> so, and that's, that's why the men got to step up the game yes yes and that's why in scripture you see in the book of ephesians god began first with the male man husbands love your wife first then wives submit because there is a connection when a man loves a woman submitting becomes easier easy. and god knows that pattern exactly. and stuff like that so mm -hmm. very key point she just stressed mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. that's good that's good i i need a i need to go chew on that for a little bit <laughs> um okay so my last question is about uh bountiful harvest mm -hmm. what if you guys harvested together what have you gathered together and where are you at in your walk with God now oh yes so much and I would say you know I am exceptionally grateful that even this year we are 16 years married together and it's not even just because of the length of time like to say okay one of the blessings God gave us is this longevity but I think more than just the length of being married for 16 years is the quality of what we have experienced in those 16 years. Wonderful relationship and God is still working on us. There's still a process and we are still submitting, you know, to the work that God is doing and still even learning more about marriages, relationships. But I think other than just the length of time, he has blessed us and the enjoyment of being together but he has blessed us with wonderful children our kids love him they are part of the work of god they help us in their own ways you know to make sure the assignment god has for our life but i think above all else one of the blessings god has brought for our relationships are the people he has brought to the ministry who themselves are being blessed by seeing us model the roles of a husband and a wife and they themselves in their relationships, they can see a prototype of something to implement. And they will share with us, Pastor, of what we see God doing in you guys' life. We were able to improve our relationship. We were able to get rid of this. And for me, that is the greatest thing that God can use my life to speak to many out there, even with this program that we are doing right now. And I just want to bless God for everyone who, you know, our marriage has reached out to them in, in whatever way. And even for this program that God is using and to give keys and wisdom to those of you out there, I just pray the blessing of the Lord upon your life. And whatever you are listening, going through struggles and crisis, I invoke the wisdom of God in your relationship, the areas that you are asking God, God help me and you are the verge of divorce i pray that god will rescue your relationship that he will expose you to materials he will expose you to teachings like this to conversations like this he will expose you to even books that you will stumble into to read i will give you the wisdom keys some of you will begin to have dreams that you will pick up wisdom ideas you will meet people that have merit the principles of relationship and it will speak into your life and you will be sensitive to apply so I pray for everyone listening to this program and even more so share this particular broadcast with as many people as possible because God is definitely going to do a great job may the Lord bless you and just keep you and let his face shine upon you yes. and thank you so much for listening uh, okay. to this program thank you well thank you so thank much you. for coming thank it was you. an absolute right. pleasure to have you guys yes. God bless you, Charlotte. God thank bless you, so you much. too. Yeah. God bless you. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Tune in next time. This is Leaning Wisdom for Life.